Buildmaster is a self-hosted cross-platform CI-CD tool that helps all team members build and deploy their modded and legacy applications both on on-premise servers and in the cloud. You can configure this easily as Buildmaster includes visual editors, guides and best practices for CI-CD. There are also script templates supported by a powerful script language called Otterscript that can be edited in a low-code visual mode. In this video, we'll look at creating an ASP.NET Core application called VatComp Web in Buildmaster from code hosted in a GitLab repository. We'll then look at how we can deploy to IIS in integration, testing and production environments in a pipeline, which determine where the build will be deployed, as well as what approvals are required for deploying to each stage. While we'll focus on an ASP.NET Core application deployed to IIS, Buildmaster can build and deploy to various environments, such as Java applications to Azure, uh, Python to Docker and so on. Alright, let's start by creating an application. An application in Buildmaster is connected to a source like a Git repository and is used to build and deploy a web application or other projects. We'll start by heading over to Applications and creating a new application. Now we'll need to select the source of the application. As we're connecting to GitLab, we'll select Git repository. And then GitLab, which is the host service of our application. From here we'll just enter our GitLab username and personal access token. And now we'll select the group and repository of our application on GitLab. Uh, in this case, our application group is my samples apps one and our application is VatComp Web. Now we'll give our application a name. We'll keep the name the same as our application and call it VatComp Web. You can also give it a description, but we'll keep it blank here and move along. As you can see, Buildmaster has automatically detected suitable development platforms based on our application. Our application is written in ASP.NET, so we'll select .NET application. Buildmaster will now ask us if we're using a Docker container, which we aren't in this case. And finally, we'll select how we'll deploy our application. And this will only impact Buildmaster's setup guidance and recommended selections, and you can add as many deployment targets on an application as needed. However, as we're deploying our application to IIS, we're going to select Windows Server. Now we've done that, we can actually go over to Git here and view the branches and commits of the repository we linked to, as we're now synced up with it. Right, our application has now been created, so moving on we're going to be creating a build script next. Here we'll head over to the scripts page and add a script. Once again, Buildmaster has narrowed down the range of available templates based on our application, and as it's in ASP.NET, we'll select build.NET project. From here we'll select our application file, and select a feed we've already created in ProGit as our NuGet package source, and release as our build configuration. We can also specify .NET settings here. For now though, we'll just keep the settings the way they are and create our script. Now we've done that, all that's left here is to build our application. In Buildmaster, build artifacts are the files that you add to a build after building or compiling your code that you intend to add to deploy a release. Before you do anything else, we'll need to inspect and confirm them. OK, everything looks good here, so we'll move along. Next, we'll create a configuration file, which is going to allow us to set and deploy environment-specific configuration values without the need for code changes, manually logging into the servers, or deploying the entire application. To create one, we'll head over to Configuration Files and create a configuration file. We'll select appsettings.json as our configuration file. And you'll see here that Buildmaster has already specified the integration, testing and production instances we need. We'll now set up a few security and deployment options. Note that Buildmaster will secure instances so that only users with access to production can view the production instance of your configuration file. Next, we'll need to create a deploy script, which is used to deploy the artifacts or packages that were created in our build script, which will be run during the several stages of the pipeline, which we'll create later in the video. To create one, we'll go back to scripts and add a new script. Buildmaster recommends creating a deploy to the IIS script, as we've already specified earlier that we'll be deploying to IIS. Here we'll configure our script. We'll call the app pool name VatComp Web App Pool, and set the deploy path as C Websites VatComp Web leaving the other options as is. Now we'll deploy our application by selecting our build from the list, and then running our deploy script. Now we'll create a pipeline like we spoke about earlier, which is like the server or environment that our build will be deployed to, formed into repeatable release processes. To create this, we'll go to Pipelines and create a pipeline. 
Buildmaster will once again offer options related to our environment, with the option of showing them all. We're going to select Main Release Branch as we're creating a single main pipeline for our release. And now we'll create the pipeline. The last thing we'll need to do is create a release, which is used to create, test and deliver code changes to our production environment in a consistent process, grouping related builds together under a common release number and deployment pipeline. To do this, we'll head over to Release and create a release. Here we'll need to specify the release branch, pipeline, release number and name. As it's our first release, we'll just give this a version of 1.0.0 and then create the release. Your application is now set up, complete with the build stages ready in the pipeline you created. As one last optional step, we will add an issue tracker, which will automatically pull issues associated with our application, allowing us to see release notes or prevent deployment if there are open issues. To add this, we'll go to issues and connect to an issue tracker. We'll select GitLab to connect to our GitLab account. Release mapping will make sure GitLab issues milestones field and the Buildmaster release number and name are the same to map Buildmaster's releases to GitLab versions. Here we'll keep the settings the same and save it. We can now see the issues page, which will display any issues if there are any. Nice work creating your first CI CD application using Buildmaster.